We've had a whole bunch of deer and turkeys tagged during direct hits from Category 5 storms, and what happened to them might surprise you. What do wildlife do in general during a hurricane? We think of the devastating effects that that hurricanes can have on humans, and I don't want to dismiss that. It can be catastrophic. I live in Florida. I've been directly affected by multiple hurricanes myself, and I know that those effects can be devastating. But what about wildlife? How do they respond? Well, it's kind of interesting if you look at wildlife in general, and I wanted to show you some of the more mobile species like birds that can that have a lot of options to deal with hurricanes. And what I'm showing you right now is an image from BirdCast. And what this, this technology does is actually track migrations of birds. And you can see if you're looking at Florida at 5 a.m. the day before Hurricane Milton hit the center of Florida, a lot of birds were migrating south all the way through Florida at 5 a.m. And now I'm showing you the image the next day at 5 a.m. You can see a lot of the birds completely evacuated the area where the hurricane was going to hit, even though it was more than 12 hours before landfall. They knew, which is pretty interesting in and of itself, they knew ahead of time and evacuated the area like a lot of humans do. They got out. They were not affected directly by the storm at all. Interestingly, some birds also seem to be thrill seekers, and they do the opposite, which I think some humans do as well. Think about those surfers that are riding those really crazy, gnarly waves during storms. Well, some birds seem to do the same thing where they'll actually hitch a ride intentionally on the winds from the storm, or uh, there's some evidence that some may actually just get disoriented. But in either case, birds will ride the wind really long distances in some cases and end up in places that are well outside of their normal range. For example, in Hurricane Helene recently, some bird species were documented to get caught in the storm or ride the storm all the way from the Gulf of Mexico up into Tennessee. So pretty crazy. That doesn't work very well for deer and turkeys, right? Well, one deer tried to ride away from a hurricane in the Florida Keys and he died. He drowned, so it didn't work very well for him. But amazingly, in all of these studies where we've had tagged white-tailed deer or key deer, that individual is the only one that we've ever tracked during a hurricane that died from exposure to it. Pretty incredible how resilient this species is to it. Even though they can't evacuate, they still have behaviors that are allowing them to withstand the storm. So we've had uh, deer that were tagged during Hurricane Andrew. Those of you that remember, that was a devastating storm down in the Everglades region of Florida. It was a Category 5 in 1992. In that case, all of the deer that were tagged in that direct hit still survived the storm. Pretty amazing. Hurricane Irma, that was more recently also a Cat 5, but a little bit north of that in Florida. We had GPS tags on a bunch of deer, and the researchers were able to document not a single tagged deer in that study died either. So pretty incredible out of the studies of key deer and these two from whitetail deer, uh, pretty direct hits from major storms and only one individual has died. It's not clear if that individual was trying to swim between islands or if it was swept out to sea in storm surge. Not clear what was happening in that case, but the one individual did drown. So what about wild turkeys? Well, they actually do a similar thing to whitetail deer where they're not evacuating the areas, at least not over long distances. In fact, wild turkey research shows that during Hurricane Matthew in South Carolina or Hurricane Harvey in Texas, both major storms, a Category 5 and Category 4 in 2016 and 17, most of the turkeys that were directly hit by that storm survived. In fact, 20 in South Carolina. One of the 20 that were tagged died in South Carolina, 
two of the 22 in Texas died. So most of the turkeys even are able to survive these storms. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't affect their behavior. The white-tailed deer do the same thing that a lot of people do. They seek higher ground and they, they shelter in place in that higher ground. They avoid the normal areas that they select, which are lowlands or wetlands. Those are prone to flooding. So you see deer evacuate those areas into higher ground in the nearby area. In some cases, they might move outside of their home range to do that, but fairly short distance, especially compared to a lot of bird species. And then wild turkeys, they're not geared up for long distance flight either. What they do is quite different than deer. They actually shelter in place. Their movements are reduced, whereas the deer movements tend to increase. And with those re reduced movements, they also tend to roost on the ground instead of in trees at night. Makes a lot of sense. And they are able to withstand the direct effects of these storms. Now, I don't want to uh, give you the impression that they don't have any effects on the species. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's just that the effects of the storms are not directly on the individuals. They're indirect because they affect the structure of the plant community that the species use for habitat. How it affects deer or turkeys could be quite dependent on where they're at and the context they're in. To give you an example of this, the deer that were affected by Hurricane Andrew in the Everglades, those deer survived, but they had a 13-fold decrease in fawn production because of the prolonged flooding that occurred in the Everglades as a result of that storm. So most of the ground was wet. It occurred during the breeding season for the animals, so they may have had lower conception, but also they probably had lower fawn survival because a lot of the fawns probably succumbed to the flooding that occurred throughout the system that year. So a 13-fold decrease in production of that population. But if you go right across uh, to the, the key deer refuge, the key deer that were affected by Georges and Irene, those storms, even though they contaminated uh, over a third of the water holes with salt water so that they weren't drinkable for the animals, they still saw a twofold increase in fawn production from the key deer population that was sustained for multiple years. Now, you might ask yourself, why would they be different? Well, in the case with the key deer, the hurricane actually disturbed the plant community in a way that was beneficial to the animals. In fact, they, it reduced canopy cover, allowed a lot of sunlight to the ground, and stimulated the seed bank for a lot of really beneficial forb plant species and early, early successional plant uh, species that are high quality for, for key deer to eat made that widely available, and we see an increase in the reproductive success of that species. In fact, uh, Hurricane Lothar that hit France, one of the worst ones in uh, over a century, that hit right in the middle of roe deer range, and they saw the same thing from roe deer in that study where almost all of the individuals survived, all of the ones they tagged survived, and they saw a long-term increase in the productivity of roe deer because of the changes in plant community. A similar thing could be expected to happen to wild turkeys. Now, uh, the, the damaging of trees could negatively affect the species because it reduces roost sites, or it may increase, increase clutter at the ground level, affecting their, their habitat negatively but it also may have positive effects because the sunlight penetrating to the forest floor and stimulating that seed bank might result in high quality brooding cover or nesting cover that could augment the productivity of that species overall. And that makes a lot of sense. When you look at systems like the ones that we have in the South, these open forest systems are often characterized by these high wind storms and other events that are disturbing the canopy and we also have frequent fire going through the system and it maintained these these savanna 
ecosystems over the long term and it makes sense a lot of our species like white-tailed deer and wild turkeys and numerous other bird species and reptiles and amphibians that are adapted to these disturbance frequented systems actually tend to to benefit from these types of disturbances in the long term so i know hurricanes can be quite devastating to humans and and we need to continue to keep people that are affected in, in our mind, but you can rest assured a lot of our wildlife species evolved with these kinds of storms, and in some cases they're even dependent on these kinds of events to maintain the plant community structure and habitat that suits their demands. So I appreciate you listening. If you want to hear more information about things like this, make sure that you like and subscribe because we're going to bring, bring in you more.